All right, let's take a look at a third optimization problem. Now, the first two problems did this. The first problem uh, found a maximum value, a maximum area. The second problem found a maximum volume. Now, in this third problem, remember optimization works for both maximums and minimums. So in this third problem, we'll actually wind up finding a minimum length. But we'll still use the same six steps that we have previously. Now, if you haven't done it yet, I would recommend go ahead and watch the first and second optimization examples first because it will explain these six steps. So with that in mind, we'll still use the same six steps that we did in the previous one. So let's take a look at the problem. Okay, now the problem says this. You have a rancher and he plans to fence a corral, a rectangular corral that's adjacent to a lake. Now the corral needs to enclose 80,000 square feet and he wants to use the edge of the lake as one side of the corral. And the questions are, what are the corral dimensions which would minimize uh, the amount of fencing material that you'd have to buy? And then what is that minimum amount of fencing material? So let's go back to our rules and we'll run through the rules just like we've done in the previous problems. So the first problem, rule, or step says this, uh, draw a picture and label all the quantities. So let's go ahead and do that. Now if you drew a picture of this, it would look like this. Uh, this little blue line right here, here's the lake, and you've got a rectangular corral, and it looks like this. Now altogether you want to enclose 80,000 square feet. So what I'll have is the enclosed area would be 80,000 uh, square feet. So 80,000 square feet. Okay, you've got to come up with a formula that ties everything together. So first of all, let's go ahead and label the sides. Now the two sides that run up and down, I'm going to go ahead and call those x. I don't know what they are. So this side is x. This is the same length, so this one would be x. And let's go ahead and call this side y. So I've got my picture drawn, label the things that I, uh, the qualities are involved in the problem. Let's take a look at that. That takes care of the first step. Let's look at the second step. So the second step says this, write an equation for the thing that you're trying to either minimize or maximize. So going back to the problem, what we're trying to minimize here is the total length of fence. So the total perimeter of the fence uh, is the length around the edge. So what we've got is two sections of x and one section of y will give us the length. So in this problem, what we're trying to do is to find the minimum length. So minimum length. Now the length would just be the perimeter, so the length in this problem, uh, L would be equal to, now again you've got the two sections of X, so 2X plus, and you've got one section of Y. So this is the uh, formula that you're going to try to find the minimum L for. So you needed an initial um, formula that ties everything together, and there it is. So now, let's go back and look at the third step. So we've got an equation that relates to the variables, x and y, but we've got to put the whole thing in terms of a single variable. So step three usually is the toughest step. Let's go ahead and try that one. And again, I think I'll do what I've done in the past, too, is I'll just label these as we go across. So the first uh, step was to draw the picture. So there's our picture. Uh, the second step was to find an equation that ties it all together. So there's step two. We've got an equation. Now, the problem is this. You have to get the whole equation in terms of x or the whole equation in terms of y. You can't have two variables. So we'll go over to the third step and we'll move it over here. So starting for step number three, um, we want to either get x in terms of y or y in terms of x. Now, how to do that? And you really have to look at your picture and be a little bit creative on these. Uh, look at what you know. You know that the total area is 80,000 square feet, and the area is the length times the width. So really, the only little side equation over here you can work with is the fact that you know that uh, the area of the rectangle, um, x times y, would have to be equal to 80,000. Now what you'd like to do is either get x in terms of y or y in terms of x. You can work with either one. Um, I think I'll solve this thing for y. So I'll have y is equal to 80,000 divided by x. So what this does, this gives me an equation that puts y in terms of x. I think I'll put a little blue box around that one. So what this is putting y in terms of x right here. 
Now, take that back over here and substitute it in the original equation. So you have L is equal to 2x plus y. In place of y, put what it's equal to, which is 80,000 divided by x. So that's going to get you this. L would be equal to 2x plus 80,000 divided by x. And this is the equation in terms of one variable. So I think we'll stop right there and put a little box around this one. Um, we wanted to find the equation we want to minimize in terms of a single variable. So that gets us to this right here. And all of that together takes care of step three. So let's take a look at step four. Um, what step four says is, if possible, put some limits on this that make sense for the problem. So what limits would you put on x that would make sense on this problem? And what we can look at is, is you kind of draw a little picture of it over here at the side. Um, if you wanted to, uh, let's go ahead and stick this in blue. Suppose this, we had, here's the lake right here. Now one possibility is this, is you would use almost none of it for y, use the entire thing for x, and what you'd have would be two extremely long sections of x and almost no y at all. Now since you've got a constant area, x times y would have to be equal to 80,000. If you wanted to, you could let this go out infinitely long, and it would wind up, you could possibly let it go to infinity. So x could go as far as infinity. Now the other extreme, suppose you used almost none of it for uh, x and almost all of it for y. In that case, you would have one that looks sort of like this. It would be extremely thin. It would run the entire length of the river, and it would go almost to zero. So what this is going to give you will be these limits. You'll have that x um, has to be greater than or equal to zero, and of course if it went to zero, you'd have no uh, corral at all. But in this case, there's really no restrictions on x. It could go all the way out to infinity. So in step number four, uh, occasionally you'll get this in a problem, is that basically there are no restrictions whatsoever on x. You can let it be a, I'll go all the way to zero and as big as you want to be. So you're pretty much free to pick whatever you want. Okay, let's go to the next step. Uh, next step says this. You want to find the maximum or minimum occurs where the derivative is equal to zero, so you've got to find the derivative. So let's go back to the problem. Now this is going to be step number... Five, we'll put it right here. So step number five is, is to find the derivative of this. Now a suggestion before you find it, just to make sure if you do it like this, you're going to have to use the quotient rule. So a suggestion before you find the derivative is take this x on the bottom and move it up to the top first. So I'm going to do this. I'll let L be equal to 2x plus 80,000 and I'll take that x to the positive one on the bottom, move it up to the top, and make it be x to the negative one. Now the whole reason for doing that is to avoid the quotient rule. So now with that, let's go ahead and find the derivative. Uh, so L prime is going to be equal to, the derivative of 2x would be 2, plus, this is going to be 80, 000, constant 80,000, and then I'll have minus 1, x to the negative 2. So when I find the derivative, it looks like that. Okay, now I think I'll still rewrite this. Take this negative, move it in front, and take that x to the negative 2, move it to the bottom, make it be x to the positive 2. So this will turn back into L prime is equal to 2, and then it's going to be minus 80,000 over x squared. So we'll stick this one in blue. So what this is, this is going to be the derivative function. All right, so let's take a look at step six. And now that you've got the derivative function uh, to find where the maximums or minimums occur, set the derivative equal to zero and solve for the value of x that would give you the maximum or minimum. So what we'll do is take this thing, and first of all, this is going to be our step six. We'll put it right here. So step six is set the derivative equal to zero, 
and solve for x. So this is going to be 2 minus 80,000 over x squared. Now I'll take uh, all of this and move it to this side, and that's going to give me 80,000 over x squared is equal to 2. Now, continuing to solve this, we'll just switch the position of these two. Move the x squared over here and move the 2 down here. So what that's going to get you to is 80,000 divided by 2 is equal to x squared. So that gets you to 40,000 is equal to x squared. So x would be equal to plus or minus the square root of 40,000. would be equal to x. Now again, it's plus or minus, but the negative won't make any sense in our problem. So the square root of 40,000 is 200, and 200 would be equal to x. So what this is, this is the first of the dimensions that you needed. So if you look back up at your problem, you now know that this length is going to be 200, and this length is going to be 200. So you've got your two lengths. But now the question is, what is y? Well, to find out what y is, now that you know what x is, you can plug it back into this equation right here. So y would be equal to 80,000 divided by 200. So we'll scoot this down just a little bit. Uh, and again, take this 200 here and plug it up in here. So I know that y is going to be equal to 80,000 divided by 200. And what that will give me is y is equal to 400. Now our units on this are going to be feet. So um, I've got y is equal to 400 feet and x is equal to 200. This would be feet right here. So those are the dimensions for the corral. Uh, now we still have one more question to answer. So I know I want to put 400 right here. So the question was, what is the total length of fence that the farmer has to buy? And you can get it off the picture, or you can just go back up and put it back into this equation right here. So the total length, and I think we'll just go ahead and stick it right up in here. So the total length of fence that you have to buy would be 2 times x, which is 200, plus y, which is 400, and if you add all that together, you would get 800 feet um, would be the total, the minimum amount of fence that that a rancher would have to buy to enclose that area. So again, let's kind of run through the whole problem one last time, just to see. First of all, draw yourself a picture of it and label the things that you know. Second thing, come up with an equation for the thing that you're trying to minimize. In this case, we're trying to minimize length, which is the perimeter of the corral. Third step, you uh, have to get the entire equation in terms of a single variable, so you need to get rid of that y. So use the fact that x times y is 80,000, solve for y, plug it in, and that gives you a single equation in terms of x. Next step, you've got to put some limits on x. And if you can kind of imagine, x can really be almost all the way to zero, or it can go all the way to positive infinity. So really, there's no restrictions whatsoever on x. So go to the fifth step. Uh, you got to find the derivative. Um, so find the derivative in step five. And in step six, the maximums or minimums occur where the derivative is set equal to zero. So set the derivative equal to zero and solve for x. Now once you've got x, you can take this answer and move it back up here and plug it in here. That'll let you solve for y. So you've got x and you've got y, and you've answered the first part of the problem. So the first part of the problem was um, find the dimensions. And the second part of the problem was to know, okay, if you went down to the store, how many total feet of fencing material would you have to buy? And again, you can use this equation right here. So the amount of fence, plug in x, plug in y, and you get that the minimum amount of fence that would enclose 80,000 square feet is 800 total feet. 
So there's a third optimization problem that involves a minimum rather than a maximum.